Hi, this is Mark from Skywagon University again, doing another sort of look around a plane and a little bit of a sort of show and tell kind of thing on this particular one. Um, it's a Jabiru J250, or as they pronounce it in Australia, a Jabiru, or something like that. Anyway, they're made in Australia. They are Australian, but they're assembled and built in the US. So Jabiru makes the airframe, Jabiru makes the engine. We'll go over the engine and all the details of it. And all the pieces are shipped to Kentucky or somewhere back, back east, and they're actually built here in the US. So this is an, an SLSA, a special light sport aircraft. And this particular one, its owner had it converted to experimental so he could work on it. But um, it's basically a little modern 172. So let's go over some of the details. So a quick overview of the whole plane, and then we'll look at some more detail. It's kind of like a 172. It's got a three, it's got a, the, the engine is a six cylinder Jabiru 330, 3300, because it's 3.3 .3 liters, six cylinder, made by Jabiru. We'll pull the cowl off later. It's got a wooden composite propeller on it. It's a 30 foot wingspan. It's got a gross weight of 1,320 pounds and it does 120 knots, which is the criteria for light sport in the US. However, if you were to run it at a higher RPM of which it's capable, it would go faster than that, but it's restricted mentally and in its book to be at 2850 and 2850 makes 320 knots, which is, makes it light sport. Also, it's a four seat fuselage with two seats in it. So it's got a massive baggage area in Australia and the Jabiru 450 is a four seater and it's this plane, very similar. It's got a 30 foot wingspan. They hold uh, 39 gallons of gas, fuel, petrol. They um, burn four to five gallons an hour. So it's got fairly extensive range and the useful load is around 500 pounds. So basically this is a 2007. It's like a modern 172, although there is such a thing as a modern 172, but a modern 172 is 400 grand, and this is like 75 or 80. So this plane's got 500 hours total on everything, US certified, and really well equipped for what it is. Let's have a little bit of a look around it. So we just opened the doors, and there's a didgeridoo in here, because it's an Australian plane, how weird. Hmm, interesting. Let's see how this thing works. Ah, that was not it. Not bad for an English guy, huh? But, you know, why was that in here? That's weird. So, back to the plane. Width, light sport, small, no. Handy tape measure. The cabin width is 43 inches. That's the same as that Cardinal we did. That's the same as um, a Mooney, a 172. It's, it's actually very wide for its size. So that was surprising. And then in the back, we'll open the baggage door in a minute. It should have four seats, but is only two seats. So it's got a massive baggage area. So the configuration of the stick would be more comfortable for somebody who's used to flying like a cub or a, because the throttle's on the left, like in a cub, and the stick is in your right hand. And if you like it the other way around, you sit on that seat. Throttle over there, uh, right, and it's just one stick with both controls on it. This is a push to torque. This is an autopilot. The push to torque for the right side is here on the dash. So it's literally throttle controls here, flaps, and, uh, very conventional. This is the brakes, it's just a, both brakes at the same time, so you don't want to do a tight turn with brakes on, you make the turn and then you brake. It's got three fuel cutoff switches. So one down here under the dash, and one on each uh, door post, which is where the fuel's coming from, from the uh, tanks, and one over there as well. So three fuel cutoffs. And starting it is very simple. It's not like a Rotax. It's not geared, it's direct drive. When you start it, you just flick these two sort of handy military looking switches on, turn the key. If it's cold, you pull the choke. So we'll start that in a minute. It's got autopilot, true track autopilot. It's even got a little feature like the um, GFC 500 uh, Garmin autopilot. 
If you were in any configuration that wasn't what you wanted, you just press level and it will. It'll just do level. It'll just level it off. It doesn't know where it's going. It just levels it and it goes straight. This is a true track order pad. A couple of EFISs, a COM, a digital transponder, an intercom, digital fuel gauges, flat positions, and then there's engine instrument here, which will show you all temperature, oil pressure, RPM, and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty well laying out. Air vents. Australia has hot weather too, so it's pretty well ventilated. And these are very popular down there. Flaps right here near the throttle, which is kind of neat. And a wide cabin with a nice sort of long nose forward view of it. So, the back. If you look in here, I'll open that back door. Huge. Oh, you're kidding me. What? All this stuff in here. Chuck that away. It better not actually, because it'll come back. So it's got this giant baggage area, which you have to be careful not to overload it. This plane's got a 500 pound useful load, a couple of 200 pound guys and 30 gallons of gas, and you're there. But variants of it are four seaters. So it's probably paperwork more than actual ability. And it could probably carry the weight. It's got 110 square foot wing. The uh, 172 is 180 square foot wing. So it's a, it's a smaller wing, but it's a smaller lighter plane. The wing loading is 11, pounds a square foot or thereabouts. But you can imagine, light camping gear, suitcases, dog, whatever, you're in this back door. Very um, not common for a light sport. A lot of light sports, you open the two front doors and the only baggage area is like a little pocket this big behind the front seat. This thing's enormous. Enough for your didgeridoo, your boomerang, and uh, various other accoutrements of the trade. Okay, so to, put, to take the cowling off, there's a screw there, Three quick releases there, and then a piano hinge here with a wire inside, and you just pull the wire out. So this wire is in there, and you just pull it out. If that's difficult to put in and out, we're going to do it off camera. So here we are, pulling the lid. Oh, that's heavy. Well, all of a pound and a half. It's got, this paint is amazing. It's like purple, gold. You look at it here, it's green. So here's the engine, made by Jabiru in a Jabiru. So it's, it's a six cylinder, 3.3 litre, flat, air cooled, horizontally opposed. Starters here, engine mounts. These are air ducts. So the air comes in the intakes and goes down through them. It's just like a miniature version of, um, you know, a Lycoming or a Continental. Uh, they are they're 2,000 hour TBO. They're 120 horsepower. They're 3.3 liters. That's why it's called the 3300. And I think there's a four cylinder version of it that's called the 2200. Two cylinders, 2.2 liters. Direct drive, no gearbox. So when you're flying it, you're running it at like 2800 RPM direct. So a good, reliable, um, engine built for this exact application. Two magnetos, if you come around here, you can see a very conventional layout. Magneto on the back, it's like a, the drive on the back there is, generates the spark and there's impulses here, two mags. Quite a pretty little installation. No need to hang a giant heavy like homing on the front of it if you've got that. So the general construction of the whole plane is it's composite. There's no metal, no fabric. You can see outlines of ribs underneath it in the skin if you get it in the lights. So it's got ribs in there. Um, 30 foot wingspan. Cessna is like uh, 172 is like 36, 35 and a half. So it's a bit narrower, a bit shorter. You hit your head on the aileron of a Cessna. So it's this much lower. Two, ca two tanks, two caps, so like 18, 19 aside. And then obviously a little tapering fuselage. One strange thing I've noticed is that that if you were to push down on its tail, like in a 150 or 152 and move it around, it wants to keep going. I mean, if I let go, it'll just hit the ground. Look, look. I'm actually stopping it going down. It would sit there. Normally you have to load that up with bags of lead shot to work on the nose wheel. So it's probably just something to do with its center of gravity and its aerodynamics, but very strong. I mean, it's like, this is fixed. 
no trim here, it's literally trim here and then the trim moves the elevator, so the range moves, so the trim tabs are fixed, but it just, the, it, the place that it starts as neutral changes with the trim. Um, it's just like a all composite, modern type of uh, light sport plane, that's why it's efficient, that's why it burns five gallons an hour. So, let's um, see how she flies. So the oil temperature isn't warm enough. It's showing it's flashing and it's red and there's an alarm and there's a red light. So when the oil temperature reaches the correct temperature, that light will go out and that alarm button will stop flashing. Both of these EPISes will do exactly the same job as each other. You could make this one be that, you could make that one be this. So that one's on engine, and this one's on like terrain, nav, and flight. This is engine temperature and control, his amount of fuel flow, his RPM, his airspeed. There are no tow brakes, just rudder on both sides, and the only brake is this little handle in the middle. So you can't ride the brakes by accident. Very conventional run-up. Runner up to 14, 1500 RPM. Mag check. Carb heat. Choke off. Oil temp is at 124. Warning's gone. Message is gone. Okay, boost pump on. Ten degrees of flaps. Brake off. Parthenil, uh Jabaru, five nine one Juliet, departing runway two three, a local flight, Placerville. RPM, so we're good. No problem to take off, of course. It's got a big plane feel to it. It's sort of sedate, it's not twitchy. I'm going to pull back on the RPM, fuel pump off. We're doing 90. We're doing 2700 RPM. More than I'm used to in a light combing, but it's designed to do 3150. But 2850 is about normal cruise, so I'm 2700 in the pan. Flaps are up. We just had a lot of rain, clouds are all clearing, it was fog this morning, so this was all very, very wet this morning. It's all greened up, it's like late spring, and it started to go brown, and then we had about seven or eight inches of rain, so it's all looking really nice around here for now. And I like it this time of year because it's sort of cooler and it can rain. And there are no fires, like a British summer. Placerville, Jabiru, 591 Juliet's on left hand, 223 at Placerville. Helicopter, 
Time by Juliet on left base, 2 to the Atlantic on full stop. Got to slow it down. And the flat arc starts at 80. We're out nearly there. And the flaps are very fast acting. It's like a 172 on final. Let me base the final. I got full flaps. I'm doing 70. Probably a little bit fast for this, but I'm going to let it slow down when we get down near the ground. Just feel what she wants to land at. So, Jabiru, a 9 1 Julia, short final, 2 3 Placerville. I mean, it seems very, like, easy, adaptable, normal. You could buy this plane instead of a 172. You could train in it, learn in it. You could have fly with luggage and a friends or just, you know, like, on your own. And it would be great. And it burns four and a half, five gallons an hour. And it will burn car gas. Um, the owner doesn't, because we're in California. We have an ethanol blend in it. In the, in the summer, they put ethanol in it, and it's not ideally suited for planes, but... You could burn car fuel at four, four gallons an hour, 120 knots. That's pretty damn good. So, mates, this is Mark at Sky Wiggins University signing off on Australian plane. I won't do that the whole time. Everybody thinks I'm Australian anyway. But anyway, Mark, Sky Wiggins University. Uh, click on subscribe here if you like this video. We do a lot of these. And then there's a bell. Click on the bell and you'll get notifications. But thanks very much for watching.